In DC Rebirth, Cyborg's story delves into his journey of self-discovery as he grapples with the balance between his human and machine sides. Victor Stone, also known as Cyborg, faces a central conflict of identity, constantly questioning how much of him remains human versus how much is controlled by technology. This struggle with his humanity affects his relationships, often leaving him feeling more like a machine than a person. His cybernetic components evolve throughout the series, sometimes in unexpected ways, giving him new abilities but also presenting challenges as he tries to maintain control over his systems. His connection to Star Labs, where his father Silas Stone works, adds complexity to his life, as the organization was responsible for his transformation. He navigates a complicated relationship with his father while working with or against STAR Labs depending on their goals. In his solo adventures, Cyborg faces high-tech villains, including the alien race known as the Technosapiens, who assimilate technology posing a direct threat to his humanity. Despite these personal struggles, Cyborg remains a crucial member of the Justice League, using his unique ability to interface with advanced technology to help the team in battles, especially against alien invaders. His story in DC Rebirth explores themes of humanity versus technology, isolation and acceptance as well as his evolving father-son relationship with Silas. Ultimately, Cyborg's journey deepens his emotional core while also showcasing his role as a technological powerhouse in the DC Universe. Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today, we're taking a closer look at McFarlane's Cyborg from the DC Rebirth era. Now, I haven't had the chance to get my hands on the original Build-A-Figure Cyborg, so I'm really hoping that this version is solid enough to join either my Justice League or Titans collection. Let's dive in and see if McFarlane did justice to this iconic character in action figure form. First off, the figure stands about 7 and a quarter inches or 18.5 centimeters, which keeps it in line with McFarlane's usual skill. As for the body, it mostly reuses the death metal murder machine mold except for the upper and lower torso which seems to be new along with the head sculpt and speaking of the head sculpt McFarlane has really stepped up their game here the sculpting is sharp and the paint job is incredibly well done especially on both the human and cybernetic parts honestly this head sculpt is probably the main selling point of the figure it's that good I also have to mention the subtle weathering they've applied to the silver parts of the figure. I'm not sure if the camera is picking it up, but it adds a nice worn out finish to the matte silver paint, which I think is perfect for Cyborg. It gives him a more battle worn look, which in my opinion is way better than a clean shiny silver. Plus, the small touches of red paint is scattered around the figure, just give it the right amount of color separation. Overall, McParlane has done a solid job with this figure. Despite reusing the murder machine mold, it unmistakably cyborg. It is unmistakably cyborg when you see the final product. Now when it comes to accessories, Cyborg only comes with this massive arm cannon, which is a repaint of the Jen Stewart Green Lantern construct, but in silver this time. Despite the reuse, it works really well with the figure, and I actually had a lot of fun posing him with it. 
it just fits Cyborg's vibe perfectly. Alright, now let's talk articulation. Even though this mold is older, I was curious to see if it still holds up compared to McFarlane's latest figures. Let's start with the head articulation. Now for the hand and shoulder articulation, so that can rotate, that will be a hindrance, but you can go through it. Then you can do the T-pose, typical McParlene uh, ball peg here. And then cut there double jointed elbow and then double peg here on the wrist he has an abdominal cut then he also has a waist rotation Together, they actually have a very good abdominal articulation. Side to side, back, and fo forward's a little limited, which is usually McParlane's problem when it comes to articulation. On the leg, okay, there's a pretty good range on the thigh swivel there. Then you can kick that far can kick back that far so we can do the split double jointed knee then a shear wall the ankle joint you can do that you can do that then toe articulation then you can also do the oh Mine's a little stuck. Okay, there it is. The bandam. Honestly, the articulation is still pretty much in line with the newer figures. Now, is that a good thing? Well, for me, it highlights that McParlane's articulation engineering hasn't evolved much. Sure, they've upgraded from single jointed elbows to double jointed ones, but beyond that, not much has changed, and those ankle joints, they're really in need of an upgrade. It's tough to get this figure into simple vanilla poses because of those stubborn ankle joints. Alright folks, it's time for the final verdict. McParlane Cyborg from the DC Rebirth era may not be breaking new ground with articulation but what it looks in possibility it more uh, than makes up for its sculpt paint and overall design the head sculpt is phenomenal and easily one of the standout features and the subtle weathering on the silver parts adds a nice battle worn feel that suits cyborg perfectly Yes, the body reuses the murder machine mold and the arm cannon is recycled from John Stewart's construct, but both work surprisingly well here. The figure still holds its own and looks fantastic on display. So if you're a fan of Cyborg or just looking to add a solid figure to your Justice League or Titans collection, this one's definitely worth considering. Thanks for watching and as always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more figure reviews.